Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Despite its primary designation, the Rockwell B-1 Lancer is not as instantly recognizable as other bombers like the B-2 or even the B-52. However, over nearly 50 years, the Lancer has evolved into one of the United States military's most valuable assets. First introduced in 1974, the B-1 is a supersonic, variable-sweep wing, strategic bomber developed by Rockwell International, which later became part of Boeing. Like the F-14, which was introduced around the same time, the Lancer can move its wings from a traditional configuration to a swept wing configuration, depending on the situation. Despite being 146 feet long and boasting a total wingspan of 137 feet, the B-1 can travel at speeds of more than 800 miles per hour and has a range of more than 6,000 nautical miles. Over the years, the B-1 has played an important role in conflicts from Yugoslavia and Afghanistan to Iraq. In order to keep it competitive despite the rapid advancement of technology, the B-1 has undergone a series of block upgrades and improvements. Many of these focused on the aircraft's ability to carry more bombs or utilize different ordnance types. However, in 2012, the United States Air Force initiated what became known as the Integrated Battle Station, or IBS, modification. This combined three separate upgrades, including a new fully integrated data link, vertical situational display unit, and central integrated test system. The FIDL allowed for electronic data sharing, while the VSDU replaced the old flight instruments with multi-function color displays. including one dedicated to threat evasion and targeting. Finally, the CITS functions as a diagnostic system. This allows the crew to monitor over 9,000 parameters on the aircraft to prevent accidents before they happen. The B-1 can carry up to 50,000 pounds of ordnance in its three bomb bays. The aircraft also boasts six external hardpoints. The B-1 was explicitly intended to carry a wide range of different bomb types at once. And the U.S. military has established several preset weapons loads for just this purpose. One of the rare weapons used aboard the B-1 is the MK-62 Quick Strike Sea Mine. Basically, a converted Mark 82 unguided bomb. These weapons are often assembled right before being loaded onto the aircraft. This helps ground crews become more familiar with the weapons before they are carefully positioned inside the bomb bays. Loading ordnance into a bomber is a delicate and time-consuming process. Many of these bombs weigh hundreds or even thousands of pounds. Therefore, specialized machinery is needed to move them around the tarmac and lift them into the bomb bay. The bombs must also be configured in a way that makes sense for the upcoming mission, as not every bomb is suitable for every type of attack. 
Though it is indeed a heavy bomber, the B-1 gives the appearance of a particularly large fighter aircraft. It is fast, maneuverable, and capable of carrying anti-ship and anti-aircraft missiles to protect itself while in the air. The four-person crew, which consists of an aircraft commander, a pilot, and both defensive and offensive systems officers, wear standard flight gear on the majority of the missions. They enter the aircraft, which is 34 feet high at the tallest point, via a hatch in the fuselage under the cockpit. Once inside, they have a thoroughly modern aerial battle station at their fingertips. Once in the air, the B-1 is a fearsome adversary. It can not only strike targets with incredible precision, but it can also escape the area quickly before enemy aircraft can be scrambled to engage it. This was, and remains, a completely new type of bomber. However, it is far from the oldest weapon of its kind still in service with the U.S. military. The B-52 Strato Fortress may actually go on to become the first aircraft to remain in military service for 100 years. Indeed, this long-range, subsonic strategic bomber first saw action in 1955 and has remained a staple in the United States fleet ever since. Still, as with the B-1, the B-52 has gone through numerous rounds of upgrades and enhancements. The most current variant, the B-52J, will include new Rolls-Royce F-130 engines and a completely upgraded radar system. This new round of upgrades will also see the Strato Fortress's cockpit, which has remained largely unchanged since the 1950s, get a significant digital upgrade. The future design will feature a sleeker look and better integration to improve pilot reaction times. Despite all of the current and future upgrades, operating a B-52 has hardly changed in the past 70 years. Indeed, the Strato Fortress was primarily designed for nuclear deterrence, but has also been used extensively in conventional bombing missions. Its large payload capacity allows it to carry a wide range of munitions, including guided and unguided bombs, cruise missiles, and air-launched ballistic missiles. The specific operations of the B-52 can vary depending on the mission requirements, but it is mainly used for strategic deterrence, close air support, or precision bombing. At more than 150 feet long, the massive B-52 can carry up to 70,000 pounds of ordnance inside its two internal bomb bays. This gives it incredible strike potential against a wide range of targets. Of course, since the 1950s and 60s, the B-52 has been reconfigured to carry both smart and conventional bombs, as well as bunker busters and other specialty munitions.
the B-52 can also carry and launch long-range cruise missiles, which add a whole other dynamic to the plane's strike capabilities, particularly against targets it would not be able to reach in time. Overall, few planes have proven to be as adaptable as the B-52, which, according to experts, will still have another 30 years of service in it after the current upgrades are complete. The B-52 is far from the only plane to be repurposed over the years. The Lockheed C-130 Hercules, a transport aircraft first introduced in the mid-1950s, has evolved into more than a dozen different variants since entering service. Perhaps the most notable of all of these is what's known as the AC-130W, or Stinger II gunship. This heavily armed, long-endurance variant has been specifically repurposed from a mere cargo plane into a strategic ground attack platform. These modifications make the plane ideal for close air support, air interdiction, and armed reconnaissance missions, and it has already performed a number of successful operations since its introduction. Among other things, the AC-130W boasts an arsenal of precision-guided munitions, cannons, and machine guns. Its primary armament includes a 30mm GAU-23A cannon and a 105mm M102 howitzer, both of which can deliver highly accurate fire support to troops on the ground. The Stinger also boasts an advanced sensor suite and a synthetic aperture radar. These sensors enable the crew to locate and engage targets effectively, even in low light or adverse weather conditions. Best of all, since the original C-130 was designed for long-range transport, the AC-130W can loiter over a target area for extended periods, delivering sustained and precise firepower to suppress enemy positions. Like its predecessor, the AC-130 is powered by four Rolls-Royce turbofan engines. This gives it a respectable top speed of around 400 miles per hour. The Stinger is an ideal gunship because it can get up in the air relatively quickly. Depending on the current mission situation, it may be kept at armed and ready status so that it can more quickly engage the enemy when ordered. The pre-flight check consists of a mission briefing and a visual inspection of the aircraft's exterior and interior. The crew will also verify that the plane's payload, such as ammunition, supplies, or specialized equipment, is properly loaded, secured, and balanced according to mission requirements. Like the B-1 and B-52, the AC-130 is a truly fearsome weapon. Once airborne, the pilots, combat officers, and enlisted crew can literally rain down fire upon a target for hours at a time. The plane's 40mm Bofors cannon and 104mm M102 howitzer are both able to do immense damage to buildings, tanks, and bunkers. When the AC-130 is in the air, no target on the ground is safe. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.